I was torn on the F-15E or the A-10, which one I wanted to put number one on my list, you know. Prepare to be captivated by the incredible journey of the A-10 Warthog. Despite predictions of retirement, the U.S. Air Force has not only preserved it, but enhanced its prowess. This was 1979. I was in, in high school and went to the hobby store and they had a Ravel model of the, the for then brand new A-10. Uh, it, it had only been operational for a couple of years at that point. Come on a journey with us as we uncover the extraordinary past and reveal the cutting-edge advancements of the awe-inspiring Black Snake Super A-10 Warthog. Explore its unmatched resilience, groundbreaking innovations, and the lasting influence that consistently leaves the world amazed. You are watching Battleground. Consider subscribing to watch regular episodes. The A-10C Thunderbolt II, aka the Warthog, just got a major upgrade. This plane is like a superhero in the sky. It can fly with just one engine, half a tail, and part of a wing missing. And guess what? It's been doing this since 1976. They're not retiring it anytime soon, probably not until the 2040s. Why the hype? Well, this plane is the go-to guy for giving ground troops some serious backup. It's like the ultimate wingman designed specifically for close air support. The A-10 Warthog has this awesome 30 millimeter gun called the GO 8A Avenger, and earlier this year, the Air Force put it to the test in Nevada. They aimed at modern armored vehicles, and guess what? The Warthog aced it, taking down tanks like a champ, even those with fancy explosive reactive armor. Here's the cool part. These pilots mixed things up during the tests, attacking from different angles to see how well the gun works against heavily armored targets. And guess what again? Tanks were left useless. Talk about a power move. Major Kyle Addison, the big boss in charge, couldn't stop talking about the A-10's firepower. He mentioned that in a typical run, the A-10 can engage 9 to 10 targets before needing to reload. And when these bad boys fly together, they can take on over 40 armored vehicles. That's like a squadron of heroes on a mission. And that 30 millimeter gun, it shoots a crazy 3,900 rounds per minute. It's been around since the 70s when the Air Force asked for a rapid-fire gun. General Electric came up with the G8 prototype, and now it's the A-10's go-to weapon. But the story doesn't end there. The Air Force is still testing, even since 2020. They're trying out different weapons against heavily armored vehiculus. Plus, the A-10 got a facelift with new wings that can handle 10,000 flight horrors and some cool digital tech. So, basically, the A-10 Warthog is not just a plane. It's a flying legion with upgrades that make it even more of a beast in the sky. Let's dive into the A-10C Precision Engagement Program, the game changer that's making the Warthog even more badass. The A-10 is getting a hands-on upgrade with the introduction of the hands-on throttle and stick, or HOTUS system. Pilots can now control the aircraft without taking their hands off the control lever. Talk about next-level maneuverability. The A-10 is getting a major tech upgrade. They're bringing in fancy stuff like screens that can do a bunch of things, displays on pilots' helmets, and some high-tech electronic gear, including super-advanced radar systems. These upgrades are all about making the A-10 more aware of what's going on around it and better at hitting its targets especially in the heat of combat. And get this, they're strapping on helmets with built-in displays, like the BAE Systems Vision X Scorpion display system. It's like having a mini computer right in front of your eyes, giving pilots important info and helping them aim better. So, it's not just cool tech, it's making the A-10 more accurate and effective when they're on a mission. But wait, there's more. The A-10 is also getting a Link 16 connection which basically means it can share data more quickly and communicate better. This aircraft is one of a kind, designed from scratch to be a pro at close air support. And no kidding, it saved a bunch of lives. Many veterans owe their lives to this tough machine. Now, let's rewind to the 60s during the Vietnam War. The A-10 story begins when they realized they needed something better than the existing planes. Red Crown, Sandy one rolling it hot.
The Douglas A-1 Sky Raider wasn't cutting it. Too slow, not enough firepower, and getting beat up by ground fire. They tried looking for a replacement, considering different planes, but none quite fit the bill. In 1966, a big decision was made. The U.S. Air Force stopped trying to tweak existing planes and decided to build a whole new one dedicated to close air support. That's when the AX program kicked off, leading to the birth of the A-10 Warthog. General John P. McConnell, the top dog at the USF, said, Let's do this. And by December of that year, they were on the path to developing this close air support beast. Fast forward to 1970, and they were serious about it. They fine-tuned their plans, considering the potential threat from Soviet armored forces and the need for all-weather offensive operations. The A-10 specs now included a 30 mm rotary cannon, a top speed of 460 mille columns, takeoff in 4,000 feet, carrying a load of 16,000 pounds, a flight range of 285 miles, and a price tag of around $1.4 million, which is like $10 million today. In a highly competitive event, Northrop and Fairchild Republic developed prototypes, the YA-9A and YA-10A, for a crucial fly-off. The YA-10A, exceeding expectations, emerged victorious in the AX program, leading to the production of the A-10 Warthog. This $10 million aircraft played a pivotal role in safeguarding American troops globally. Serial production commenced in February 1976, delivering over 715 Warthogs to the U.S. Air Force by 1984. The A-10 is distinguished by its outstanding low-speed maneuverability due to features like a large wing area, low wing angle, and sizable ailerons. Designed for short takeoffs and landings, it operates effectively on primitive airfields near the front lines. With a 5,000-foot loitering capability, extendable to three hours with an external fuel tank, the A-10 showcases impressive damage resistance with honeycomb leading edge panels covering key sections. Enhanced roll control is achieved through ailerons at the far ends of the wings, covering nearly half the wingspan. This design, combined with a cruising speed of around 340 millicrees, makes the A-10 ideal for ground attacks compared to high-speed fighter bombers struggling with smaller, slower targets. Evolving from a robust 1970s attack aircraft, the A-10 has transformed into an intelligent combat machine, featuring advanced offense, defense, and avionic suites. Its firepower centers around the GAU-8 Avenger autocannon, firing 3,900 depleted uranium armor-piercing shells per minute with precision. This formidable capability swiftly neutralizes infantry, armored vehicles, and tanks, showcasing remarkable accuracy within a 40-foot diameter circle at 4,000 feet altitude. In 1991, during Operation Desert Storm, the U.S. A-10 aircraft did some impressive things. They destroyed more than 900 Iraqi tanks, along with 2,000 other combat vehicles and 1,200 artillery pieces. The GAU-8 Avenger gun played a big role in changing how the battlefield looked. The Avenger gun is placed a bit to the side of the aircraft, and its barrel lines up with the center of the plane. This makes sure the firepower is spread out well. The big ammo drum for this powerful gun is about 5 feet and 11.5 inches long. It's the heaviest gun, automatic cannon mounted on uh, aircraft. And can hold up to 1,350 rounds of 30 millimeter bullets. To keep these bullets safe from enemy fire, clever armor plates of different thicknesses were put between the aircraft skin and the ammo drum. This stops the bullets from exploding too soon. The A-10 isn't only about the Avenger gun. It also has AGM-65 Maverick missiles for defense against anti-aircraft systems. These missiles can find and destroy threats using special sensors from a good distance. During Operation Desert Storm, the Maverick's infrared camera was even used for night missions, acting like a makeshift night vision system. The A-10 has more weapons, including Hydra-70 cluster bombs, rocket pods, GPS and laser-guided bombs like the GBU-39 Paveway, Joint Direct Attack Munitions, JDAM, Wind Corrected Munitions Dispenser, and the AGM-154 Joint Standoff Weapon Glide Bombs. To keep the A-10 modern, the A-10 Precision Engagement Program upgraded all A-10s from 2006 to 2010 giving them new computers, displays, controls, and color screens with a moving map feature. There's also a warning system in the A-10 that tells the pilot if there are incoming missiles within the plane's range, whether they're from friends or enemies. The Electronic Warfare Unit, the ALQ-184, adds extra protection. About 6% of the aircraft is covered in heavy armor, so it can take hits from big explosives and armor-piercing bullets. Even if there's a lot of damage, 
the A-10 can keep working because it has backup systems for flying, to protect essential internal components of the A-10, such as the cockpit and parts of its flight control systems. A substantial layer of titanium aircraft armor, affectionately termed the bathtub, has been incorporated. This armor is capable of withstanding impacts from 23mm cannon fire and certain indirect hits from 57mm shell fragments. Specifically designed to resist fire, the aircraft's front windscreen and canopy offer protection against small arms fire, the most likely threat when the A-10 descends toward the ground to engage enemy troops. To further shield the aircraft's fuel system from ground attacks, all four fuel tanks are strategically positioned near the aircraft center and are separated from the fuselage. This arrangement necessitates projectiles to penetrate the aircraft's skin before reaching a fuel tank's outer layer. Most fuel system components are housed within the fuel tanks reducing the risk of fuel loss due to component failure. To provide an additional layer of protection for the fuel tanks, reticulated polyurethane foam lines both the inner and outer sides, containing debris and limiting fuel spillage in case of damage. A key factor contributing to the continued service of the A-10 is its simplicity and ease of maintenance. It doesn't require specialized runways and can operate from basic airfields, making it highly deployable in various situations. Its straightforward design and sturdy construction guarantee its ability to endure the demands of combat and continue functioning even in challenging conditions. This straightforward approach facilitates efficient maintenance, even in bases with limited capacity. The aircraft has a unique design allowing many parts to switch between the left and right sides, including engines, main landing gear, and vertical stabilizers. With sturdy landing gear, low-pressure tires, and large wings, it can take off from short, uneven runways even when heavily loaded. This flexibility enables operation from damaged airfields, taxiways, or straight stretches of highways. The A-10's smart engine setup, featuring TF-34 GE-100 turbofan engines from General Electric, reduces the risk of foreign objects getting sucked in, ensuring safer operation during maintenance and rearming. The placement of engines and exhaust nozzles serves multiple purposes, directing exhaust over the tail to evade heat-seeking missiles, and balancing the aircraft's natural tendency to tip forward minimizing adjustments for stable flight. The A-10 is really popular among military pilots, and it's famous for how well it performs in real fights. The A-10 is really popular among military pilots, and it's famous for how well it performs in real fights. One of its biggest moments was during Operation Desert Storm in 1991 in the Persian Gulf. The A-10 Warthog played a crucial role in Operation Desert Storm, excelling in providing close air support alongside other powerful aircraft. Its ability to operate at low altitudes, evade enemy attacks, and deliver precise firepower proved vital in neutralizing threats from Iraqi tanks, armored vehicles, and artillery. Despite facing significant enemy fire, only seven A-10s were shot down, and around 15 were damaged throughout the campaign. In the 2003 Operation Iraqi Freedom, and more recently during Ukraine's conflict with Russia, the A-10 Warthog showcased its resilience in providing airbase support. General James Holmes underscores the challenge of finding an ideal A-10's replacement, considering factors like cost and affordability. The focus is on preserving the A-10's unique capabilities to serve as a reliable guardian for ground troops, emphasizing that it's not just about having an aircraft for close air support, but having one that excels in this role. The A-10 Warthog remains a symbol of unwavering support for soldiers on the front lines. And as the Air Force navigates the complex path of A-10 replacement, the goal is to ensure that this legacy endures, providing effective close air support for years to come. We hope you enjoy this video. Don't forget to subscribe the channel.